it's all a flurry over at Liquid. There were rumors in Team Liquid, as you'll remember. Probably going into... It was a blast tournament. It was even pre-Dallas where the report was Cadians are already out at Liquid. And there was a number of awkward interviews where Cadian was like saying, I don't even know what's happening to me, mate. And so uh, obviously people have been saying one of the biggest disappointments, I think, has been this Liquid team. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense how poor they've been. And so uh, I'm kind of like, huh. Where do we go with this? And so, right, let's start with this little uh, rumor, I guess. But it, it, it's been reported on HLTV, so it's probably legit. This was the story that Furia, right, who, I mean, where do we even start with those motherfuckers? Like, Jesus Christ. Like, so they brought in that Kai player, and Maui absolutely fucking tore him to shreds quite rightly kai was not ready kai was unripe he was not prime for tier one cs and played absolutely terrible and the, the thing is it didn't even get better it got worse like you might expect nerves or you know elementary mistakes or not quite having the understanding about you know how you play rounds mid rounds in particular you know what you need to be doing with rotates and where you need to be looking and comms and things like this that can take time because it's very intricate at a tier one level but actually he got progressively worse he started out like below average and then became diabolical and you know me and maui we've obviously talked about it but there were rounds where it was like people were able to shoot his teammates in the back because like kai didn't understand how to close off the map and stop people squeezing through the gaps and wasn't doing his job properly like the kind of thing that happens in matchmaking that drives everybody up the wall that causes you to fucking you know kind of quit the game and so uh he wasn't it and it's funny because it was only in april in fact no it was like may let's say right and here we are in june halfway through june it was only in may fallen was saying kai has all this potential kai you know i believe in kai kai's gonna get there i see all the potential in kai it's like for fuck's sake like what were we even trying for like it, it was just nonsense and it's like listen you're not even serious keeping falling around uh, you know it's just like for fuck's sake that that org is determined to just f you know fuck up any chance it ever has of being a serious presence in tier one where they're actually going a challenge for trophies potentially and i think back to like you know when fury really had that emergence with that aggressive style the duo of case and yuri and art pushing everywhere and being super aggressive when he could still do that it was like you know they were they were a fucking legit threat nobody wanted to play furia because when they were on you know they were they were gatekeepers essentially and a lot of people by the way have said oh save k serato it's like no he's made these choices he chose to sign to that org for five years when he did he turned down liquid you know he he want he wants this for himself guys so if he wants it he's got to have it sometimes you can't help people but more on that uh in a moment so anyway Skulls has been the player at Liquid that I think um, has kind of been the one that people have been scratching their heads about. I would probably say it's about a 50-50 split, maybe 60-40, as to whether people wanted him, want him to stay and want him to go. The first problem he's got is he's unproven and he came with a $600,000 price tag, which is like the same as Munasi cost, right? So when you compare that number, I mean, obviously, Fallen cost $750,000 now in what is one of the most ridiculous fucking transfer fees of, of all time. But this was the word on the street. And as I've explained multiple times, the Brazilian orgs all have these like ridiculous buyouts because of the legal nature of their contracts. There has to be buyouts, but because they don't want to lose players who they view as you know assets, essentially, it's kind of like you know Spanish football. They uh, basically put these buyouts. They have to put these buyouts into these contracts, and the buyouts are always really, really high. Now, my understanding about this was Zeus, obviously, you know, 
Brazilian himself, he really vouched for Skulls. He was the guy who said, look, this kid is going to be good. I'm going to work with him. We're going to develop him. $600,000 is probably a bargain. If we've got to pay it, we've got to pay it. So Liquid paid it. And obviously Skulls has been okay. You know, I mean, he's had, you can see the rough edges. He's had some poor performances. I think he's been found out in some games. But I don't really know if he is the issue overall with the team the problem with liquid is they look really disjointed they don't really look like they have a cohesive vision and this is obviously played out today uh, with the other news it didn't look like they were all pulling in the same direction or conceptualized the, the the game in the same way people were trying to do different things at different times and it it wasn't working it was really panicked and labored and a lot of like very basic mistakes the kind of mistakes you just can't get away with it tier one and for me when i looked at the roster and saw naf and twists and they're going to get to work with a, a an igl i rate and respect in cadian and zeus behind them as a coach and now you've got skulls and you know and, and your kindar's there <laughs> you know i looked at it and i thought listen if your Kindar gets back to VP, your Kindar, and Skulls turns out to be good, that can be a number one team in the world. Particularly, you know, look, if, you know, FaZe, it can't last forever. Mouse are paper tigers. They're not really a world number one team. Na'Vi have got issues, you know? G2, we've just talked about. It was like, I looked at that and thought, in that world, if, Li if everything goes right for Liquid, Liquid will be formidable. But it's crazy. Your Kindar just, I think it's like that thing with Avril Lavigne. They just fucking replaced him. It's not him. <laughs> like, by the way, spoiler, I don't really believe that. Okay, just putting that out there. They just fucking replaced him. He just gone. Like, and it's like, well, his drop in performance is wild. He doesn't, he doesn't even do the same things. Like, he doesn't even approach the game in the same way. It's so crazy to me. And by the way, we're entering a time now where it does appear, your Kindar's gonna stay. He's got that hooksy plot armor. He's the fucking Jon Snow of Team Liquid. Let's be clear. Your Kindar should have been cut just for getting them to buy in on that fucking Rain Waker or whatever the fuck he was called. So, just ridiculous. So anyway, Furia are now looking at uh, taking Skulls, right? And so, that's fine. Maybe he'll do better in that environment and you know obviously is he an upgrade for kai yes <laughs> like very much so and i sort of agree i can still see the upside so i saw this this was the start of the day you know i'm having a cup of coffee chilling maxing relaxing maybe some cooling and uh i was like okay skulls is gonna go so the rumors around cadian weren't true and it's skulls but they obviously considered cadian they're not going to do it they're going to give cadian another uh player and uh good because i want K i want cadian and liquid to work out but that isn't what happened uh what what ended up happening instead was it looks like they're trying to sell skulls and they've benched cadian like i mean he's just gone and it's sad dude like as i said i, I don't want to say too much because i do hear lots of gossip and i hear it from players and i hear it from people who work in the scene and managers and coaches and journalists you know like we all it's one big fucking sewing circle essentially but you know what i heard was effectively people it, some players didn't believe in him some players just didn't believe in what Cadian was trying to do. He didn't have the buy-in. There was rumors at some point that Twists wanted to take over as IGL, which I hope he never goes down that route. He's a great kid. Uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. And, you know, I've seen too many players think what will fix all of their problems is them being put into the role of captain and shot caller, and it doesn't help. It actually, you know, your kinder thought that. So just, you know, if you ever need to fucking, you know, proof of how bad it can go, just look to your left. He's just, he's there. So um, this is like a sad, sad statement. Our time together didn't work out as we hoped. 
Uh, HLTV reported that the Danish captain's future with Liquid has been weighed up in May ahead of IEM Dallas, with the organization pulling the trigger on the move just one day into the tournament break. Liquid are also reportedly locked in negotiations with Furia for Skulls uh, to the Brazilian organization, with talks being positive as all involved parties want to reach an agreement. So, the ratings seem to be on the wall even before Liquid's group stage exit from IEM Dallas following losses to 9Z and G2 with the stand-in, but the report of Cadian being on the chopping block ahead of the event still came as a shock to many. Pundits in the community had criticised the performances of Yakinda and Skulls, the former being a far cry from the superstar opener we come to know, and the latter uh, clearly struggling a slot into Liquid stylistically, particularly on the T side. Players on the team had repeatedly pointed towards difficulty in meshing, different schools of knowledge, throughout their six months together and Liquid have now pulled the trigger on the first change by benching Katie and with Skulls reported to also be on the outs. I wish we could have done so many things differently, Zeus said in a post on X. It is undeniable to me that you have a big heart inside that server and an enormous amount of hunger to win. I genuinely wish you the best and will be rooting for you, Cap, meaning Casper. And so, it's fucking crazy yakinda stays skulls going cadian going and so we get back to this question well who the fuck is coming in i mean look if g2 have secured malbs i'm just gonna say straight up liquid missed a fucking trick on this one that's point number one if i'm team liquid and i am selling skulls so i'm getting some money back and i'm letting and i'm benching cadian the first thing i do is I go and get fucking Malps. Like, you know, I'm sure, honestly, G2 and Team Liquid for, for him, I don't know if he has a preference or which one you would consider b uh, bigger, but I could see him at uh, Liquid and it being a very good fit. So I just don't know how that works. Now, the other problem you've got, they've lost their AWPA. So anyone got any ideas about any good AWPAs that can go to Team Liquid? Anyone? It's it's kind of wild because there just isn't <laughs> there just isn't anyone right. You need an IGL, right? And so yeah, well you can type your simple. Let me tell you, simple going to liquid uh, again. He says he wants to be a rifle. He's done with the AWP in CS two, so he would he wouldn't fulfill that. And then listen. We are going to enter a phase, by the way. You will see this. Simple will be an IGL at some point, and it'll be a fucking glorious disaster. I mean, he's been an IGL in all but fucking name at various points in his career, but he is unironically going to gonna be a, a officially an IGL at some point. It's coming soon. I can feel it. Like the, That's one thing I'm going to be right about. He's going to be like, oh, I've got a new project, and I am the leader. It's going to be that. You'll see. So you can replace your kinder. I just don't get... I mean, now you need an AWPA, you need an IGL, and you need some fucking... Uh, you, you do need a little bit of firepower as well, probably. I don't I, I don't know how you're going to get all that in two roster moves. So, I I, I don't know. And look, I, yeah, people are saying, oh, maybe they'll bring Nitro back. Like, that can't happen again. That, that definitely can't happen. That's ridiculous to even suggest that. Um... I just don't know. I just don't know who it would be or how they're going to construct uh, a team. And as I said, this Liquid team, I, I am staggered that it's gone this way. I genuinely thought we would have been, we would have had this lineup for at least a year. It seemed to be like the sort of, you know, the, the, the solution to all of the problems. I really thought this was going to be the one for Liquid. You do also have to ask, at what point do we start saying Liquid is a terrible run fucking org in their CS division is fucking shit? Because they they haven't really been tournament relevant for a fucking while. And they keep doing these, like, roster changes, and they're changing coaches, and they're changing players, and they're changing IGLs, and they're doing all of this. And it's happening with this alarming frequency. And don't get me wrong, they're spending money, but what have you got to show for it? I mean, as I said, the, the team, I thought, I mean, by the way... I could have made all the same mistakes Joker Steve made because I remember I thought this was a good fucking lineup, but it just hasn't delivered on any sort of level. And so the reality is, yeah, at some point you probably have to start thinking about look, you can change the players, you can change the coaches, you can give them all the support staff, you can, you know, 
have all the people there to, to empower them. But ultimately, there seems to be something flawed in the construction of the teams. And that's a general manager issue. That's a GM thing. So, you know, how many, how, like, it's kind of interesting. Like, if you're a coach, you get, like, two or three tournaments where you look shit and then you will have to fall on your sword to protect the IGL. If you're an IGL, you get a few more. You get you get one coach as an extra life and about five tournaments. Or if you're hooksy, you're just indestructible. You just cannot be fucking removed from G2 no matter what happens. But when you're a general manager, it's kind of wild. It's like, I think maybe with the exception of my mate Henry, I've never really seen a general manager just be like, nah, dog, you keep building these fucking teams and it ain't working, so fuck you. We're replacing you. You know, I mean, I'm not saying, like, fire Joker Steve from the org. He's a huge part of Liquid. Just put him on something else and let somebody else get cooking in the kitchen, you know? It's kind of crazy. But anyway, this then brings us to the other question. Well, where next for Cadian? And so it should be relatively easy for him to get on a team. Relatively. He's experienced, IGL, decent brand recognition, willing to orp. It's kind of, who would it be? It, everyone's saying Fnatic. It could be. I mean, the problem was if he goes to Fnatic and replaces Afro, who's their orper over there, I think he might conceivably be a downgrade as an orper. Um, if they keep Afro, which they can't, because uh, then you've got the two orper thing and, and drop body. I, I don't know if that's... So, yeah, I mean, it would have to be for Afro. He can't go to... He won't be going to G2. That would be too insane. So, it would be a step in the right direction for Fnatic, probably. I mean, listen, maybe he was just underperforming in Liquid because it was a chaotic time. I don't know. But certainly, like, Fnatic still need, like, another two players to be, like, a real team again. Even if they were to get Kadian. He'd be there with Blaine. It'd be good, like we're in the fucking Astralis fucked us in various ways down the years club. We're in the fucking, the Danish exiles club. It'd be kind of good. But um, yeah, I, I really I really don't know. I, I, I just wouldn't wish Fnatic on anyone. And it would just make me sad to think of Cadian playing for them. Uh, because, you know, the, Fnatic have lost so much of their allure as an organize as an organization and they've they've just given up they just fucking have given up you know like it's like nip and fanatic they're just like these great names and they're just fucking it's just depressing to see what they are now you know when you think about all the history and prestige i mean this is how you know they they themselves obviously don't give a fuck these executives that preside over orgs like that they don't care they all they care about is their sick little tawdry fucking eh, i'm in i'm a sports executive i'm on a flight to riyadh i'm getting treated like royalty built any good teams lately won any trophies Oh, no, you're dog shit in every single game. Oh, okay, my bad. Well, you know, maybe, you know. Well, enjoy business class, at least, I guess. So, you know, it's fucking sad. I, uh, you know, and, and I would, if Cadian would come to me for advice, which, you know, he, he wouldn't. He's very much his own man. But if he was to come to me for advice and say, ah, you know, I've got a couple of offers on the table. And I'm like, well, the first thing you do is you take Fnatic off the table. <laughs> and then you look. Uh, at what's there nip isn't an option for people saying maybe he could go to nip and and do a rebuild because obviously i think the best thing about the emergence of nip has been kind of wrinkled and so uh, i just don't know i don't know where he's at i don't know where he where he could go where he would fit in it just you know fanatic kind of feels like a sad move but it is probably the best move right now so yeah very very sad I, you know, I I, I want to say as well. Um, what we're gonna we'll find out through podcasts and interviews and all of that stuff. We'll find out what actually happened and when we do. It's probably gonna be like, you know, some players that we like definitely didn't vibe with Cadian or what whatever went went on there. And what makes me really sad is like it looked so good at the start. You remember seeing those videos with Edward Cleland and they were all doing the fucking you know team bonding exercises and they were all hugging each other and being open and honest with each other and I thought okay this is great. 
This really can go somewhere. What a what a good group of mature players that are going to grow together and develop together, and they understand success doesn't happen overnight. It immediately reinforced my opinion. It's why I, dub I doubled down on Twitter. That you were like Richard. It's it's April and Team Liquid are dog shit. They will be winning trophies with this lineup before the end of the year. And obviously, just been fucking. I got got. I got got. I got fooled. Uh, it takes a lot to fool me, but Team Liquid really did. Uh, I thought all the pieces were there, and so this is one of those ones that you have to kind of, you have to go, you you will have to go back and study all of this. And I'm looking forward to the truth coming out about what went on and and everything. So you know, the other question is if Skulls has been deemed a bust and they're selling him to Furia. You know what happens to Zeus? And you think to yourself like. It, it conceivably can't be the case that he goes again, like, in this unceremonious fashion. But, like, Zeus is a guy that, like, I think he was brought in specifically to, const you know, to construct this team. And you have to wonder if they're going to go in a more, you know, kind of traditional direction now. I mean, you know, if your Kindar is sticking around and we're going to have Naf, Yeki, and Twists as the core... You gotta throw an IGL in there, you gotta throw an AWPA in there. Like maybe maybe they're throwing in a new coach as well. And maybe that's where Nitro comes in. You know, maybe Nitro is gonna coach the team. Maybe that's where the rumors are with that one. I don't know. But it's wild. And yeah, I, I'm I'm kinda like a lot of the fans. I think listen, I was critical of Elige in terms of his attitude. And listen, he had Team Liquid by the balls. I was very surprised when they let him go. But, you know, you look at how he's performing at Complexity. Maybe being at Complexity he's humbled him a little bit. Probably not. I mean, he has got that star player ego because he's a fantastic talent and he is a star player. But you kind of think, like, would any of this be happening if Elise was still on the roster as well? You know, it's kind of like, yeah. And... Yeah, maybe maybe if he was still on the roster or that was still an option, which I, yeah, I don't think it is. So it's 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 just been one thing after another with Liquid. I don't know where they go. I'm tr genuinely trying to rack my brains to think about good options that are on the market right now that you're going to be able to pick up, and I just don't see it. I don't see it at all. Like simple is always a name that's going to get kicked around. You have to wonder how much longer it's going to be before Simple returns to a team. And so uh, it's possible. You, they could pick him up as a rifler. He's got history with the org. My understanding is he's always been like he didn't want to play in an, you know, a North American organization again because he was very uh, bound to staying at home. But obviously with everything that's happened in the country, he's been on the road for a long, long time now. It's one of the reasons why he took that break and he became a little bit jaded. Maybe maybe he feels differently these days, and certainly uh, it's fucking gasoline on a dumpster fire <laughs> if he fucking joins this particular team. But maybe everybody vibes with it. I just, I just don't know, though. It just seems to me to be... Like, the problems facing Liquid now, unless they've already got solutions, are very interesting. Like, it's hard to see a way forward, a way to improve. Particularly as well, after having watched Blast, I'm kind of getting a, a, a vibe, you might say, about where everybody's going to be in terms of uh, just the overall level. And I, I have to say... I don't think we've got a particularly... It's better than the end of CSGO, but I think the top 10 is very vulnerable right now. They don't feel... It doesn't feel great. It feels like any team could make one or two roster moves and be, like, dominant. Like, Spirits are probably the team for me that feels like the, com the complete team. Like... What weaknesses they do have are mitigated by the fact they've got Donk. And, like, Shiro was MVP for me at, uh, at Blast. I thought he was fucking huge. And so you look at the other teams right now, like, there's the Mezzi and Apex question at Vitality. There's the Mouse uh, uh, mentality problem. Phase, they're all just getting old. And you have to, and Rops is kind of like, you know, I, I saw a funny post about Rops where it was like, apparently he bought a Porsche and now everyone's like, here was his stats 
for nine months before he bought the Porsche and he had the stats for nine months after he bought the Porsche. It turns out buying sports cars in uh, CS is not a good idea. But, uh, yeah, he's he's had a drop-off, quite a notable drop-off for a player that was good, very good, arguably the best player at the start of CS2. And now we're kind of we're, we're looking at a spot where Zewu isn't isn't a top two player this year. Simple isn't in the kind of running; just hasn't even played. He's played one series for Falcons in 2024 or whatever, and all of a sudden, Rops isn't going to be in contention for the best player either. <laughs> He's kind of like just not there. It's very strange. It's going to be a crazy top twenty actually this year, but. Anyway, Na'Vi, right? We know this is the fifth best team, supposedly, right now. We just saw them uh, get to the final of Blast, and then Alexi B in the best of five curse happened again. G2 making roster moves, maybe one more, maybe not. We don't know. How much better are they going to be with Malbs? Virtus Pro being seventh pretty much tells you all you need to know about the top ten. Like, Virtus Pro are fucking when you know they're they're either above okay or they're diabolically bad. It's kind of, it's wild like right now the top ten actually, and so you know Liquid could make two roster moves, and if they're good, if they're blockbuster moves, Liquid could be right in there. I mean I'm looking at this like heroic tenth, Astralis eighth. Everyone was jerking off about how good fucking Astralis was. Wow, all they needed to do was make Device the IGL, and now they're really good. And it's like, they didn't even beat Mongols to fucking win a tournament that should have been a freebie, you know? So, so um, what did you make of the roster moves today? I'll, well, I've got you here. I'll get some quick reactions. Obviously, it's, sure, a, it's sure. a shit show over at Liquid, by all accounts. So... First being G2 and Nexa, and then Liquid and Cadian. Mm. I because uh, we're not really talking about Juve returning as into the breach as coach, right? Because that's breaking. That's <laughs> yeah, break. no, no, <laughs> we're definitely not. Okay, yeah. The well, the G2 Nexa stuff. Uh, I feel like was in the works for a while. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, it was pretty off. I mean, the problem with it all is that I said from the get-go very first event like this is just a mistake like he shouldn't be here because mm. I, I worked the blast world finals I was saying stuff on the desk like this is a huge huge downgrade and oh lo and behold it is a huge huge downgrade in that g2 like the problem with g2 is it's like nobody wants to take responsibility for their roster moves and yet it's so obvious what's going on like they wanted mm. him like there's a million other anchors they could have gone for in tier one counter-strike but they just wanted their friend on the team it was a nepotism hire that led to them actually surprisingly winning one trophy in Dallas, where Nexa did terribly, by the way. Yeah. And then Hunter, who seemed to be actually kind of like the rough, the 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 word on the street seems to be like Hunter was such a big proponent to get Nexa back on the team. And it's like, he's fallen off a cliff too. So none yeah. of this has worked out in any way. And so seeing Malbs being the guy that's next up for Nexa, it's like, for the love of God, don't put him one for one in his roles. It's more like he fits with him on T side and CT side. You kind of you're gonna have to do some shuffling there. Mm. And I'm I'm a fan of it though overall. I, I'm glad that Malbs will get a shot on a, on a top team. I just hope that they don't throw him to the wolves by putting him in anchor positions and that's like, what I said. Lurk spots. Yeah, I said like, it's got to be Hooksy who's got it. Like, listen, you're getting yet another fucking chance, mate. Like, apparently you can do no wrong. Like, it doesn't matter how bad yeah. you perform, how shit the team looks. You can even miss a tournament, have your star player call in your absence using a stand-in that hadn't played a competitive game of CS in two years. They win the tournament and you're welcome back with open arms and the orgs saying, actually, Hooksy played an important part. It's like, fucking hell. I have never never seen a player with a charmed life like this so i know fair yeah. enough but like so hooksy's got to do the carrigan thing and basically like just fucking you know what i mean he's just gotta like put himself in I, the roles that are left over yeah yeah i i, I honestly i kind of hate it as a one for one if they also replace hooksy with some kind of anchor player then i can see it being pretty good overall and mm -hmm. for the for the Cadian thing i i just feel like the divorce between him and the team is it's kind of it, it's kind of misguided in that i really wish they figured out how to make Cadian system work for liquid mm -hmm. it, it would have been more fun to me to see that than whatever we're going to get next which seems like a 
a very likely is your Kindar going to in-game lead again? Mm -hmm. Who is going to in-game lead again? Because I don't really love the prospect of either of those. And then if you're just poaching an in-game leader, I, I I don't that that then well it really opens the door for a lot. I'll say that it opens the door for a lot if Liquid go for somebody else. But I'm the bad thing about it is that for Cadian, I'm not exactly sure of where he goes. The the funny one that was floated earlier uh, around on my stream was was big. You just do one for one with Sersen. You let Tabson frag a little bit again. You switch to English speaking, and actually, Sersen's been the weakest part of Big for a while now. And Cadian's not really a good individual player. I will, I, okay, but, I will fall yeah. on my knees and weep if Cadian <laughs> ends up on Big. Like, I know, I, I, I'll I know. actually shed tears. I will. I, will I, know. I I can't handle that, mate. That mate, the belt, the belt will be out. I can't handle I, it. I, another one though that's interesting is like fanatic because like Afro that's what everyone's pretty, saying pretty bad yeah that's what yeah. everyone's saying like you put Afro him in for Afro. Afro not, might be pretty bad by yeah. the way but his numbers look better than Cadian's at the moment yeah but against terrible opposition if i'm yeah sure context to that's, it. that's yeah. fair that's he's fair. barely he's barely staying afloat against like tier three online people well i can give you i can give you some real leaks one of my reliable oh. sources sent me, like, I've had a bunch of spicy DMs. All I have to do to get spicy DMs is you just put CS2 roster moves in the, in the title of the stream. You go live, and then people start messaging you. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, did, did you know this? So I, I had a spicy that. one earlier. I'm not going to say on, on stream, but uh, uh, this one. Um, so apparently it's uh, Skulls, the, the deal, the, irrespective of whether the deal goes ahead with Furia, he isn't going to be in the, the team anymore. And Good. Uh, oh according to this uh, me message, uh, Zeus is out too. They Good, haven't. thank God. What do you mean, thank God? That's my boy. I I understand that he was chill to have beers with in the last handful of years, but this dude has been fraudulent for the last three years as a as a coach. Fluxo was the worst team I have watched. Yeah, I I, I I I remember your and fucking Fluxo, your the, salt on Fluxo. It, Anybody watching that NARMR in 2023 saw the worst Counter Strike being played on the planet and the easiest zero three pick of all time going into <laughs> that major. Like that was just yeah, that I, was I, just I, absurd. I think I actually did have the was a zero three, but I I think you you swayed me. I think listening to you. <laughs> um, yeah. So and if yeah, yo, so no, it's fine. You go on. You you should shit. So yeah, Zeus well, is, uh, Zeus is uh, apparently gone. I well, don't know. I'll, me I'll message him and ask if that's true. I. I mean, I just, I think that Zeus kind of somehow in the rumbling or whatever happened with Liquid, I, I guess Joke of Steve or whatever, like, I think that it's, yo, it's fair to say that, like, if a coach has good uh, just personal skills and outwardly is social and seems easy to vibe with, I think mm -hmm. it's a little easier to say they're they're good. And, you know, he's he's storied. He he obviously yeah. did a lot with uh, LGSK. Yeah, I mean, like, mm -hmm. that was really impressive. And with, with the Liquid the second time around, definitely wasn't bad. But I feel like there's been a precipitous drop-off in his well that's where it went wrong that's that that was the it's it's me or the igl that was the moment where i think if mm -hmm. he could go back you know if he could get the fucking delorean out you know he goes back to that moment and doesn't do it he tries to work through the problems i get it's frustrating as a coach when you can't win igls around your way of thinking and it can be catastrophic in you know, you know for for the success of the team and i also don't like in general the way in esports coaches carry no authority or weight it just feels like they're just some guy that like facilitates what the ig like some go-between for the org and the igl and they they facilitate some stuff but a lot of them you know it's like hey guys keep up the great work yes let's do this here's a bottle of water yeah let's go you know and it's like what 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 even are they? And they don't have any authority over the roster. It's kind of like weird. It's it's a weird sport like that. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I uh, I, yeah. I, look, listen. If we're looking at just the fucking reality of the results, obviously, yeah, Zeus has had a few fucking busts. But I know he's got like a great mind for the game. I just don't know. I just don't know what's happening in terms of him like implementing it. But um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't doubt that. A kick in the pants and a new environment could help him because there's mm. also a world where this was beyond salvaging with 
finding a balance between Cadian's vision and the way that Naf and Twist want to play the well, game. Wow. So I can I can give you some more stuff. This is all from the same spicy DM. Now, by the way, I th this is a reliable source, but I haven't vetted any of this information. So I'm just throwing garbage mm -hmm. out into the world right now. I'm just being clickbait, Lewis. So people can take all okay. of this. People, I'll, I'll find out the truth. I always do. But uh, so this is what the so basically, um, Zeus Zeus out of liquid, but. Faze also inquired about bringing back twists and vitality also as well when they heard there was like issues over there but um twist is now likely to be the igl of liquid that's what this source says he's gonna stay there but he's he's gonna be the new leader so they're not looking they're not in the market for a new igl it's gonna be him naf and yeki is the core and they're gonna bring in two people and twist is gonna be the igl so he is gonna do that that's what people are saying Live, yeah. live reaction, Maui. Uh, yeah, no, the twist in game leading is just the worst part of that by far. I really, I just want to see anybody else doing it. I like a more, a more default heavy IGL that can just mid round for them. Like, mm. I, I would have even liked the, even though it didn't seem likely that he would do it, I would even welcome the Nitro comeback at this point over that. Mm -hmm. I actually would have welcomed that because Nitro provably can make. Naf and twist into winners and i think that obviously he would need to catch up to speed but it's like come on versus like a 0.9 rating skulls 0.9 rating yakindar 0.9 rating katie and i think the mm. last thing you have to worry about is is firepower being bad on on nitro <laughs> like he could yeah. frag at that level in all honesty like i don't i don't think he Maybe. i don't doubt that but and I, I think he the was calling pretty would be a little bit bad at the him. end when he when he when he came back from valorant he was pretty bad actually he was worse than when he went away the first time yeah he made a he made an ESL Pro League Grand Finals though as an IGL, which mm. is better than I can say anything that Liquid did with Skulls, Kadian, and Yakindar. Well, this iteration though, so, and I think there's even, in a way, some better pieces. But because he, I, I just I'm just really, just moving forward. I think the the biggest question I have for Liquid beyond even even the in game leading is like, well now you're opening yourself up to to get any opera. so. What's there? Because well, if uh, you can, if the you, DM yeah. continues, Maui. It's a long one. Okay, all right. Um, so they are apparently uh, keeping tabs on Wrinkle. Yo, yeah, yeah. Wrin wrinkle, Wrinkle. I, I'm very high on Wrinkle. Mm -hmm. I think that he, uh, of looking at just the HLTV rankings, I think he probably could be a. I mean, I, I mean, I made the claim the other day that NIP are. A, in my power rankings the 12th ranked team i would say that it's probably it's kind of because wrinkle is like around the 12th best opera in the world for me right now interesting with room to grow so apparently they're uh they're seeing because uh i know he he only recently moved to nip but apparently they're uh they don't mind paying if it comes to that that's that's pretty interesting i also think that because hades is probably is on the bench for ents right now I'm not like Hades was really good this year too. I actually was thinking yeah. of putting Hades on my top twenty list. I, I really, I really was. That's wild. He, I mean, he's his Ence was bad, but not because of him. Also, like for sure, for yeah. sure, he was. But that's he that, did well. That, that that's an, that's a little idiosyncratic. <laughs> yeah, a, it, 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 we all have him. Like I say, I looked at that liquid lineup and said, that's the world number one team. Like, <laughs> fucking look how that's panned out. But yeah, I mean, nah, I don't think Hades can make the top 20. Like someone in the chat, Heseltine, uh, my favorite politician, he said, um, Hades is just a European OC. That's kind of how I feel <laughs> about him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, well, I didn't put him. Let's just say that. I didn't yeah, put yeah, him in the top fair, 20. Fair. I think he's in my he's in my 22 to 30, though. He'd okay. probably be around like 20, 28th or something like that if I kept going down. But uh no, I, I don't think the thing is also Hades is like, you know, when, when OC was the guy on when OC was the guy on Liquid, it was always like, is OC really a team liquid caliber opera? And the answer was a resounding no. And I kind of do feel similarly about that where I rate Hades higher than OC. I think mm -hmm. Hades is better than OC, but I also don't think if you're liquid, you should be shooting there. You should be shooting for the wrinkle. Give me a lot of potential. Yeah. Yeah. And, and cool though yeah and then yeah. the the uh, only other thing in the dm was like apparently um the reason for the 
uh, cut is like it's not a tactical thing it's not like a performance thing it's like it's a very much a personal thing that apparently like you know there was it was quite fractious over there people were saying like they didn't really like it, it it's kind of interesting because i i obviously really really like Cadian. like uh you know mm -hmm. I, I don't mind saying i'm totally biased consider him a friend i think he's been done pretty dirty down the down the years but what's interesting is what this dm says is pretty much the same thing that was coming out of astralis with the stabby move which is you know the way he gives feedback people don't like it now that could just be players being soft or whatever but you know it, it it it's now it's like now happened a few times and I, i've said it all the time like i think i think with kadian it's like he works when he gets players that like want to be molded um they want a leader and they want guidance when he yeah. has to deal with stars it always goes wrong every single time yeah that's agreed agreed he's he's greater at making people better than the sum of their parts but not necessarily it's kind of like the same seemingly hiccup that Alexi sort of had when he first joined G2. You know, mm -hmm. he was good at getting people to buy into a system that allows the best teamwork to flourish, but not necessarily the best individual to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, fuck. I mean, it, it's, it's a weird time. Like, I don't know what Liquid sign is going to be. I like, legitimately don't know. Um, like, the, the source just checked in there and said listen the twist side gl thing it isn't 100 percent, but it's likely uh it's mm -hmm. more likely than not because they that apparently the list of targets they've got doesn't include igl so we'll wait and see but um i mean yeah like uh the like i, I don't know who they're gonna get and i think they missed a they missed a trick if malbs is really going to g2 liquid have got to be kicking themselves because okay, that that felt like such an obvious move to me yeah yeah, Malbs would have been really sick. Okay, this is completely off topic, but kind of I wanted just your quick opinion on this before I dip out and eat yeah, lunch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so Launders had this tweet a few days ago saying that he thinks that Hooksy is a better in-game leader than Blade ever was, and I'm like, no. that's 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 kind of just fucked up. And I I I replied to that and I said I said, dude, if I had Monacy, JKS, Nico, and Hunter, people would think I'm a better in-game leader than Sean Gares ever was. I mean, what you have to remember. So let me let me uh, let me go back in time. Um, uh, obviously, right? Like, I think Launders is more informed, uh, probably from the flip side time. Right? He's like not really thinking about one point six. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, again, if you, like over the totality of his career. So let me let me give you an example. He was on a team. Uh, yes, it was on a team uh, with Starix, and it was called Amazing Gaming. Nobody ever mm -hmm. remembers this team because obviously in 2010 when Navi came along, uh, obviously they were the go-to. You know, they were the super team from from that region. But it was it was an all Ukrainian lineup called Amazing Gaming. And basically, uh, Blade was the IGL on that team, right? And you won't you won't remember the the rest of the lineup apart from Starix. Probably like not a lot of them went on to have like amazing careers or anything like that. Um, but uh, anyway, um, they got third at a World Cyber Games. They got a bronze medal at a World Cyber Games. In fact, hang on, let me um, let me show it on stream. Uh, it was two thousand and seven. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, here it is. World Cyber Games 2007, right? And I want you to just... You, if you've got the stream on, you'll be able to see it, but you can just look at the uh, yeah. Wikipedia page yourself, right? So World Cyber Games is like a pretty big deal for those who don't know. And this was uh, this was 2007, so this was in the US. Like 2005 was Singapore. Uh, 2006, I can't remember where it was. But anyway, these were like big deals at, at, at the time. And so um, the, if you look at like... Uh, the um 
the teams that are here it's like got the fucking amazing fanatic team it's got the noa yep. team the classic danish team pentagram were there like this this was a fucking the the, the rock at team like nasu and plaster and conte and lopez the gaules mipr with fnx right like mm -hmm. uh, th this is like a fucking unreal stacked you know there's adrin and k23 the the eg team with fucking cole that no one remembers uh anyway the so th this was like a fucking stacked tournament in in 2007 and like blade guided amazing fucking gaming hang on i'll show you the lineup uh blade guided that to a bronze medal there and they beat um let me let me remember it was the fucking uh there it is yeah they beat they beat the finnish team they beat uh rockat and then they lost to the eventual winners and won in the third match against amazing um and like that was a fucking super close again i remember that game um so like blade in general hang on I, I, again i'll just i'll just show you like his 1.6 career like blade in general like as an igl back in the day in 1.6 was like he could take players and you know get solid fucking finishes his problem legacy wise was unfortunately like just because of who he played with and obviously he was on amazing for a long time he could never quite get the fucking the gold you know like it was always like bronze or silver or you know yeah they, yeah. Would, they would go to like you know they would they would they would also like have these tournaments where they would just like not show up at all but i was like 1.6 was kind of weird like that you just would get tournaments. someone says oh someone's saying show it on stream it's not it's not being shown on stream. oh shit i've been i've done the whole bit without that right so sorry guys. <laughs> I, I didn't even have it on stream. i was just i was scrolling through Wikipedia myself so but yeah, i yeah right because when, when i so anyway this this is like I'll, I'll show everybody this is the 2007 World Cyber Games, we'll do all this again. There's your team pentagram with Taz and Neo and Lord and Kubin. And there's the NOA with Zonic and Sunder and Ave. And there's the Fnatic with Khan and DSN. And then you look at, like, this is the Blade lineup with Starix. And it's like, he was on Amazing Gaming for a long time. They they swapped some of the players in and out um, down the years. But, like, they, get a, they got a bronze medal at this event. And uh, it's, like, it's fucking crazy. It's actually crazy. And like I say, if you, uh, I'll, I'll bring up his uh, career now as well. Though, and just we'll just do redo the bit as if it that didn't go <laughs> wrong. Um, like like I say, if you go back, like because this is yeah, this is his like one point six career, it's kind of starting around here. I mean, a lot of this stuff at like low tier, but he did have like I mean, this is like a big deal. The Intel, this Intel Challenge Challenge Cup was like a big tournament at the time. You go up to like uh, Game Goon was like a decent sized tournament you had a bronze there um you know and it was like he he like definitely was like a slept on igl i just understand that like by the time we get into flip side tactics and the csgo era they were excruciating to watch but but yeah they were excruciating to watch but they were like effective right you know so i don't know i i put it this way i see nothing in g2 that makes me think hooksy's like cooking in the kitchen at all i think he's got an incredible core to work with and the fact that he's only won three trophies and and by the way he can't count dallas he wasn't there i don't care how many phone calls he had with the team um <laughs> you know he yeah, just, yeah. Right. so no i i think like obviously i don't know if launders is including 1.6 in his assessment maybe there's an argument to be made although i just think fl flip side tactics literally were a tactical team like it, it was all tactics all of the time you know they weren't they they were super boring to watch they grinded out games they were like basically a proto jane versus pro um, right exactly uh, but you, you I, I don't see how you can make that argument so okay all right. Yeah, just needed to get that one off my chest. No, that's right. fine. I got to get lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Go right. get lunch. Um, Yeah, uh, hit me up. Keep in touch. I guess it's going to be like a, a crazy few months because we're going to have roster mania. So I'll reciprocate. If you're doing a stream and you need a talking head or whatever, I'll, I'll drop by. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll hit you up for that. All right, man. Look after for yourself. Sure. Yeah, good to catch up. Yeah, peace. Have good a good luck. rest of your evening. Thanks, dude. That was Maui Snake dropping by the stream. Obviously a friend of the stream. 
um good to good to just hang out and catch up obviously maui's thought maui's someone whose opinion i value uh very very highly if you haven't already followed him uh go make sure you follow his uh, youtube channel uh, and uh, and his twitch stream now which he's using more and more it's all just maui snake it's all similarly branded so uh, go do 